This is the story of how the Looney Tunes got caught in a space jam, only to be saved by the fancy footwork of Michael Jordan. Somewhere, far in the farthest fringes of outer space is a neon star. And on this neon star is a place called Moron Mountain. It's a theme park, and it's a circus. It's a carnival, and it's lame. Lamer than lame. It reaches a level of lame that makes alien kids in the next solar system embarrassed. Worst of all, alien kids' parents like it. That's how lame. I told you if I told you once, I told you a thousand, 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 thousand times. Yelled Moron Mountain's big boss, Swackhammer, to his nerd lux. We need new attractions. New ones. We need something. <laughs> nutty. Nutty. Something wacky. Wacky. We need something, 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 something. We need something. Ronnie? Suggested Bupkis, who had just turned on the television to a Looney Tunes cartoon show. Looney. Looney, that's it. Get the Looney Tunes. Bring them here. Swackhammer ordered. He should have ordered a sense of humor while he was at it. The Nerdlux knew that Swackhammer would turn them into something like old peanut brittle stuck to the bottom of a chair if they didn't do what he said. So they blasted off for Earth to kidnap the Looney Tunes, or else. They sped through the galaxy in the corporate spaceship as fast as the speed limit would allow, until it broke through the clouds and crashed into the Earth, plowing through the ground and down, down into Looney Tune land. When the tiny invaders piled out of the ship, they quickly caught sight of a long-eared life form. We seek the one they call Bugs Bunny. Pound announced to Bugs himself. Have you seen him? Where is this guy? Is he around? Nope. Never heard of him, said Bugs. The aliens were baffled for several minutes before they realized that they were talking to a bunny and that he was Bugs. You know, maybe there is no intelligent life out there in the universe after all. Bugs shrugged. Okay, bunny, gather up your tune, pal. Demanded Pound, which was funny for a guy that tiny to demand anything. Bugs called a meeting of all the Looney Tunes at the Cartoon Union Hall. And within minutes, everybody was there. These little guys would like to make an announcement. Here you go, shorty. Bug shoved the nerd like spokes alien to the microphone. <laughs> you, all of you, are now our prisoners. <laughs> Everybody laughed so hard, they fell out of their seats. We are taking you. So fast, Doc. You've got to give us a chance to defend ourselves. Bugs handed him a rule book where it said exactly that. Read them and wait, boys. Uh -huh. Give them a chance to defend themselves. Uh, do we have to? It's in the rule book. How do you think the Looney Tunes defended themselves against these pint sized space pikes? Easy. They challenged them to a basketball game. Now, the Nerdlux didn't know anything about basketball. But they had a plan. An underhanded, nasty one, but it was a plan. The Nerdlux paid a visit to the real world, a whole different place from Looney Tunes Land, where they planned to steal the basketball talents from the greatest players in the game. One by one, the magical basketball skills of these great players disappeared in a vapor. It sent the whole league into a panic. What could be worse? I'll tell you. Once they got these great hoop skills, the five clunky nerdlucks changed into the biggest, baddest, don't ever make them maddest basketball team you've ever seen. They were uglier than, than a three-legged toad in a Halloween costume. And that's the good news. They were monsters with powers of superstars. They were monsters. And nobody could stop them. Except maybe Bugs Bunny. Then again, maybe not. Here they come! Take care, beware! Great gargantuan growling thunders, thumping towers of purple slime, time grime, hulking hunks of heavy funk, bad mamma jammers, quake shake, you loony wimps! They're in the place, in your face, from outer space, they're here to erase you! Let's give them a cheer! Yay!
of the mustard. They're so ferocious, the monsters. They're so explosive, nasty dirt. I mean, dudes, they got attitude and that altitude. Invading aliens on an evil mission. Give a chair, they're here for some competition. Wrecking rabbits, they're extreme savage. Ready by me. You got it? Look out. Look out. Watch out. Watch out. They'll dribble, try and throw, try and slam. That was before. Now they stole some talent and they can score. They got inside power. Brains and brawns. Those NBA guys, the skills are gone. Yeah. They shoot those threes from way downtown. They can drive the lane. Bang and pound. Snarls and growls. Flagrant foul. You sweat so much, you need a truckload of talent. Look out. Look out. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. They'll dribble. Guy and dunk. Guy and slam. On their feet. The parents of Vesta into shredded tweets. So drive the lane and set a big hand. Turn a fog on into a real check hand. The razzle dads and make cats slap. They got style, they got class. They make that for duck sauce and Elmer glue. Mug bug into rabbit soup. That ball guy who likes to fly. Just shoot him down right out of the sky. His royal airness will make him soar. Soar than he's ever, ever been before. He'll hurt so much he won't score no more. He's a disease. And there's a cure. Watch out, watch out, they'll turn, try, and stay in the slam. Watch out, watch out, watch out, it's a horrendous, it's a horrendous, it's a monster jam. Yeah, the front is at home, yeah, with a monster jam. Meanwhile, on the golf course, Michael Jordan, who had retired as the greatest basketball player in the history of this world, or any other, was playing a few holes with his friends when, without warning, Michael disappeared into the seventh hole. Down he fell, what? sliding and oh! turning and whooshing into Looney Tune land where he landed for plop. That's funny. Michael said, confused. Oh, look, is that Michael? It's Michael! It's Air Jordan. <laughs> Basketball. Ooh, I thought I saw a game I did to Michael Jordan. Oh, what's going on here? Bugs explained the basketball challenge to Michael and how the little aliens became big bad aliens. Then he calmly pleaded, We need your help! Yeah, but I'm a baseball player now. Michael tried to explain. Right. And I'm a Shakespearean actor. Said Bugs. No matter how much they begged, Michael wouldn't budge. Till the Monstars arrived through a wall. <laughs> Michael asked. He wasn't used to being the short guy in the room. You heard of the dream team? Growled Pound, who was now about eight feet and 400 pounds of bad manners. Well, we're the mean team. What's he made? What's he man? What's he man? Michael said. The Monstars scrunched him up, dribbled him around, then bounced him off the wall. You're all washed up, Baldy. Shouted one of the beasts. Baldy. Michael replied. Michael's eyes flashed fire as he looked over the Monstars and then the befuddled Looney Tunes. Let's play some basketball. He said. Has anyone here ever played basketball? Michael asked his new team. There was a pause big enough to build apartments on. I have All heads pivoted to see a beautiful young female rabbit on the sidelines. My name is Lola Bunny. Without another word, Lola sank a reverse layup, a left hand hook, a turnaround jumper, a helicopter jam, and a three-pointer from downtown. Bugs' heart double-dribbled against his ribs. Could have been love. 
Could have been a bad batch of carrots. Bugs took the ball, passed it around his back, threw his legs, then went up for the greatest, most intricate hot dog slam dunk in history. Lola jumped and blocked a shot. The rabbit of my dreams. Bugs sighed. You better hope this Jordan character still knows how to play hoop. Daffy said as Michael concentrated on the court. You and me both, brother. Bugs agreed, although he made it a habit not to agree with Daffy too often. Michael flipped the ball in his hands and ran his fingers along the grooves. Then he and the ball hit the boards like a succession of small bombs. At the free throw line, he sprang, hung in the air like a smoke ring for a few seconds, and shot the ball. It swirled the hoop once and dropped in like water in a drain. He hit it again, then again, and again. Slam, thud, thud, slam, thud, thud, slam. He still had the stop. Fearing an epidemic of uncoordination among the great professional players in the real world, the Hazardous Materials team went to work, closing the basketball arena for everyone's protection. The basketball commissioner even called off the season. The only person in the whole universe who was happy about this was Swackhammer. For in Looney Tune land tonight was the night of the ultimate game. Are you sure these are the best seats? I like them. Yes, I can see everything from here. It's very good. He said, watching from his special courtside box seat and smoking a great big alien-sized cigar. Ladies and gentlemen. The announcer's voice echoed as the Toon Squad stumbled out to the home crowd's cheers. The player coach of the Toon Squad at six foot six from North Carolina, his royal airness, Michael Jordan. The place went nuts. Which for this crowd was redundant. You guys ready? Michael asked. Before he got an answer, the Monstars stepped onto the court and faced off Michael Jordan. <laughs> they were bigger than he remembered. And they'd been practicing. The Monstars were, well, beasts. The Looney Tunes played like their lives depended on it. Except for Daffy, who talked like his life depended on it. Little Sniffles, the mouse, tried charm. You're big, I bet you're good at basketball. I'm small, but I'll try really, really hard to be good at basketball. Really, I will. I always try hard. My mom says try your best in everything you do. Ugh. Unfortunately, charm is something the Monstars don't understand. They squashed him, and then they steamrolled Daffy, too. Press, duck. The only players making any progress in the game were Michael and Lola, who were fairly fast enough to survive the Monstars' brute force. Most of the Toon Squad didn't. Some called it a good, fast game. Others called it a rout. To tell the truth, it was the only basketball game anyone ever watched with their hands over their eyes. Luckily, the buzzer went off at halftime, or it would have been murder in the first. First half, that is. Back in the locker room, the Toon Squad was a sorry mess. Word had gotten back to them that the Monstars' basketball skills were stolen from the greatest players in the game. Moral Mountain, here we go. I'm gonna be sways. Bugs tiptoed to the faucet and put some water in a bottle, wrote something on the label, then stuck it in Michael's locker. We gotta come together. Oh, we yeah. gotta believe in ourselves. We can come back and win this game. Yeah, right. That's gonna help us. Taffy slurped. The Looney Tunes stared in shock as Michael grabbed the water bottle from his locker and took a big sip. The label read, Michael's Secret Stuff. You wouldn't hold out on us, would you? Sylvester asked. Michael noticed the label and realized what Bugs had done. Then everyone got a sip from the bottle. This goes against everything they taught me in health class. Complained Daffy. When the Toon Squad left the locker room and swarmed onto the court, they were pumped up for action. All right, all right, now, 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 now let's finish him up. Said not. Back to action now, Bugs steps in, steals the ball. Hey, he dishes off to Michael Jordan, Jordan feeds it off to Taz, Taz to Lola. Lola with a beautiful dribble drive right down the middle of the floor, bounce pass to Bugs, he stops, he shoots, he scores. The Monstars inbound the ball. Hey, Bugs knocks it down, he picks it up, feeds it to Michael Jordan, he makes a reverse layup, a two-hand slam dunk. Oh, man, Jordan's humiliating the Monstars. They're big, they're angry, and believe me, they're out of control. But they don't like to look bad. Only one thing could have stopped this amazing upset. Swackhammer. Time out! He's the one I want for more on Mountain. Growled the nasty old space shark, pointing at Michael. What about we raise the stakes a little bit? Michael challenged. If we win, you give the NBA players the talent back. If you win, you give me. Swackhammer laughed. 
like sharks would laugh if they knew funny. You'll be our star attraction. He snarled. You'll sign autographs all day long and play one-on-one -on -one with the paying customers. <laughs> and you'll always lose. Do we have a deal? Swackhammer drove a hard bargain, but he didn't drive Michael Jordan. Nobody did. Except Pugs, maybe. Deal. Michael said, then the game resumed. Crush him! Swackhammer sneered. The Monstars took their boss at his word, and it was not pretty. In two plays and 33 fouls, it was Monstars 89, Toon Squad 88. And it was up to Bugs and Michael. Ten seconds on the clock, and it was not looking good. In this case, things had to improve just to reach bad. Then Michael remembered something. He's in Looney Tune land, where all the physical rules of the real world don't count. People flatten and pop back up in Looney Tune land. People blow up with air and fly around like a balloon, then come back okay in Looney Tune land. And even in the real world, physical rules don't count much for Michael Jordan. Five seconds left. Four seconds. Bugs passes to Michael. Michael makes a drive for the basket and yipes! The Monstars make a dive for Michael. Michael leaps. Ten ferocious hands grab his legs and he goes up with the ball. Michael pulls and, oh my gosh, he stretches like a rubber band. Up, up, over the rim. The Monstars are helpless to stop him. One second left. Michael dunks. He scores. Wow, it's all over. The Tomb Squad wins. The crowd goes loony. <laughs> Swackhammer screamed. Choke artists! He turned on the Toon Squad. Get in the spaceship. You're coming with me. <gasps> no, we had a deal. Michael said. I lied. Swackhammer leered. Michael stopped pounding. Why are you taking from this guy? Because he's bigger. He's bigger than we used to be. It suddenly occurred to the Monstars that they were now bigger than Swackhammer. So they grabbed him and tied him to an Acme rocket and blasted him into outer space. They'd lost the game, but they'd won something much more important. They were free! Sort of. Michael held the ball out to the Monstars. You gotta give my friends a talent back. He said. It's part of the deal. Touch the ball. The Monstars all placed a hand on it. When they did, they shrank to Nerdlux again. The ball glowed with energy. When Michael told the five dipsy NBA stars to put their hands on the going ball later that day, they got their talents back. Basketball was safe again. The season was saved. Except for one not-so-small detail. I mean, it wouldn't be a good story without a happy ending, so here it is. Swackhammer still runs Moron Mountain. He has to. He's his only employee. No one else will work for him. The Nerdlux stayed in Looney Tune land, although they had to practice making stupid faces and kicking each other in the pants. It's part of their job description. Bugs made a big impression on Lola during the ultimate game, and now she likes him. But she won't ever let him know that. For now, anyway. And as for Michael Jordan in basketball, well, everybody knows how that worked out. To the flavor, now we got that see you, my darling. Delivery fee.